people, and welcome to this review of Pearl Jam's 11th full-length album, Gigaton. So, I don't really need to give you guys a precursor on my background with this band, right? Um, I mean, if you do need to know where I'm coming from with Pearl Jam, uh... You got an hour and 20 minutes of free time? Needless to say, I'm a pretty big Pearl Jam fan. Have been for a long time. Love these guys ever since I was a kid, and I've been looking forward to this one for a good long while now. Especially after Dance of the Clairvoyance dropped, and it was all like... Ooh, are y'all going all talking heads on us? Ooh, I like that. That single, packed along with the more crunchy and up-tempo Super Blood Wolf Moon that debuted a few weeks later, had me thinking we were in for a treat with this new Pearl Jam record. It sounded like it was going to be shifting in more of an experimental direction, which, to be frank, I'm wholeheartedly behind that idea. If you did catch the How to Get Into Pearl Jam video, then you know the last two PJ records were more of an attempt by the band to recapture their old spark after spending a bit too much time experimenting. Backspacer was basically just a skeleton record, and Lightning Bolt was full of like arena rock and radio ready types of songs and melodies. I feel like with those two records, they had successfully found their groove again, so now that they've kind of got the, their feet back on the ground, I'm okay with them attempting to branch out again and see where else they can potentially take their sound. And on this record, they take it in a lot of interesting directions. It opens strong with Whoever Said, which almost feels like a garage rock cruncher, in the same vein as Riot Act. The good parts of Riot Act, Super Blood and Clairvoyance follow that, and those songs do indeed rock. So does Quick Escape. That one sounds kind of like a 70s rock kind of jam. It's got this huge thuddy bass and a nice mid-tempo smack of a sort of vibe to it. It all flows together very well. All Right comes along and kind of calms things down a bit in a very smooth and airy kind of way. It's almost reminiscent of like late 90s or early 2000s Radiohead? Not quite that experimental mind, pump the brakes on that analogy a little, but it's relaxing and a very calming group, and they are very successful at bringing the tone down. And then Never Destination and Take the Long Way come back around with a bit more of a hard-edged, kind of punkish sort of thing, and the overall album has many strong tracks on it. There is a damn decent amount of listenable stuff on this record. I feel like the big standouts on Gigaton here definitely has to be Matt Cameron. Don't get me wrong, the rest of the guys deliver very, very good performances all throughout this record. As you've come to expect, they're Pearl Jam for God's sake, but Cameron's beats and rhythms are just locked up so crucially tight on this record. It's a more experimental, a bit more kinda let's see what we can get away with doing type of Pearl Jam record, and I like it because those more experimental Pearl Jam records, this one has what a lot of those other ones lack. Punchiness. It's got a lot of kick, it's got a lot of energy, it's got a lot of bravado, at least for a damn solid amount of it, that is. Overall, this record has mostly the right balance of punchy stuff and calming melodies to put forth a really interesting dynamic. It is a very decently balanced album. When it works, it does work very well, I'd say. Overall, I will say that this album does come recommended. This is one of the better releases we've had for the year so far, and I did enjoy most of it. Most of it. I mean, uh, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't at least mention the things that kind of stick out, or at least bring up some of the issues I did have. Like, this record is very solid, but like, it's not 10-2, Return of the Hi 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 You know, for as much time as I spend on the How to Get Into Pearl Jam video, laying out each album's individual mistakes, I didn't really highlight the band's more collective problems, did I? You'd think as long as that video is, I would've fit some time in for it, Jesus. Some of the 
common issues that can come up with any Pearl Jam record, or at least the most frustrating ones, those are usually twofold. A, Pearl Jam records tend to be front-loaded and way too freaking long. I mean, that's a critique you could put towards even their best records. It's that old 90s mentality of, oh, every album has to be 70 minutes. Well, why make an album if you're not going to make it 70 minutes? It has to be 70. We gotta fill the CD, guys. We gotta fill the CD. People haven't bought CDs for a long time, but we gotta fill the CD, dudes. That is one particular issue, and the second major thing has to be that the band just has a hard time staying focused and creating an album with a truly cohesive theme or a certain thing that sticks everything together, both sonically and lyrically. And while this album isn't, like, a glaring example of those flaws, um... I mean, those flaws are still present, people. Don't be mistaken. Just for one example, even though I love this song sonically, it's a great tune, uh, the anti-Trump sentiments put out on Quick Escape, um, they feel more like a throwaway sort of narrative plot device than an actual stabbing critique of the fucker. That also harkens back to Riot Act, too, with all its anti-Bush stuff. Like, they have the ability to go in and make a valid punching point, but they just don't. Man, a band is passionate and is just screaming and fiery as Pearl Jam. You think they'd be better at the political stuff, you know? And while there are some overarching narrative themes in the album, mostly stuff related to how society is becoming more callous and judgmental and how the ability to establish a human connection these days just seems to be getting harder and harder with each passing day, particularly pertinent message in these particular times. Wow, this album rings too fucking true, man. Oh, wash your hands. But a lot of the record, at least thematically, tends to be a bit wishy-washy and vague, and again, uncommitted. Sometimes they just completely abandon the plot of the themes to write a random song about a serial killer in Buckle Up, or in Super Blood Wolf Moon, you know, where it's this song about a tragically doomed romance. At least I think that's what those songs are about. I mean, I This record, like a lot of Pearl Jam's other output, just kind of lacks a sense of consistency. It's not gonna bother everybody, but eh, you know the guys can do better, and it sucks that they didn't, is my only point there. And also, if you don't mind me constantly going back to the How to Get Into Pearl Jam video, I don't mean to shamelessly plug that, but I'm just saying, I covered this in that video too. If you want to watch it, I mean, you know, neither here nor there. One thing I mentioned in that video in particular was how Pearl Jam records almost always tend to start off strong, but then can, like, fall off by the end. Well, this is another example of a Pearl Jam record that does exactly that. The last four tracks on this album. They're not terrible or anything. Buckle Up has a very pretty guitar lick pushing it along. And Comes Then Goes is an interesting little acoustic country tinged kind of thing. There will be a certain demographic of Pearl Jam fan that does get behind that, but... Oh man, this, this is another example of a Pearl Jam record that starts with a bang, but ends on a damp squib. Retrograde and River Cross are just super dozy, and they are really on the dreary side of things. Again, they're not unlistenable by any means. They're not like the worst of the worst when it comes to Pearl Jam tracks or anything. You know, if you dig the softer side of Pearl Jam sound, I don't think these tracks will even bother you, but... Uh, again, it's just, it's another, yet another Pearl Jam record that starts with a big bang, but ends with a quiet thud. And it leaves the album overall feeling much longer than it actually is. I don't know, maybe that's just my own personal taste when it comes to Pearl Jam. I feel like this band is at their best when they're turned up to full blast, but... I don't know, even the records where they do kind of bring things to a slower boil, it's never that bad. It's not like No Code or the worst parts of Riot Act, sort of. 
in that ballpark. It's still a very energetic, and it's still a very fun record. Th again, this record does come recommended, especially if you're an old Pearl Jam fan. I think you will get plenty out of this, so yeah, definitely give it a shot. A very strong record for the year. Gigaton gets four David Byrne impressions out of five. So what did you think? Were you vibing with this new record, or did it leave you kind of cold? But feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're at it. But until next time, I'm Crash Thompson, and I'll see you in the next video. Why are you still here? Seriously, the video's over. Go home. Oh, I get it. You want to know where it falls on this, don't you? Okay, people, look, I am not at all comfortable with ranking an album like this that isn't even a week old yet. With the other records that I do for a How to Get Into video, I've had years if not decades of time with them, and I've been able to formulate a really strong opinion over a long length of time with all those albums. I've only spun this record like four times over the weekend, you know, like, I, if you really want me to make a big ass call on it with that amount of, uh, uh, don't marry me to this opinion, but if I just gotta put it somewhere, um, Let's like slap it on the lower half of this. Well, like the lower half of this. Like, you know, it's solid, but like, mm, eh. again, I've heard it like four and a half times, people. Please don't marry me to this. I'm mostly just doing this so you don't flood my comments. Thanks for watching, people. I'll catch you in the next video. Super special thanks to Mel Madison, Elrath Matter, and Brandon Banfield.